Welcome to Average Joe's Gaming Podcast with your hosts, Joe and Tom. Today's episode, Top 10 Dice Games for the Average Joe's. Every month, Unbox and Game is giving away $1,000 worth of board games and I'm going to go over the multiple ways you can enter and how it works and what you can win. First, let's go over the ways you can enter. There are three ways you can enter. You can sign up for the for one of their membership programs and get automatic entries every single month, as well as other benefits such as VIP gift cards to their online store and automatic entries into all of their single game board game giveaways. The VIP gift card is a member benefit. I want to go over little more detail. Every month you're an active VIP member, you will receive a VIP gift card up to $15 depending on your membership level. So let's say you are a Platinum VIP member and get a $15 VIP gift card. You can use that card on anything you want on their site. Now, for the best part, any unused balance carries over from month to month and is added to your new VIP card. You get email to the second way you can enter is by shopping at their store, unboxinggame.com. You can pick up some board game merchandise from them and get one entry for every dollar you spend. And a few examples are like shirts, pins, stickers, drink coasters, a lot of things. Lastly, you can mail in an entry. Details are on the official rules on their website. Now let's discuss how this sweepstakes works. Every month after, drawing, after the drawing period ends, all entries are sent to a third-party sweepstakes administrator who makes sure all the entries are eligible and then randomly select the winner. Next, Unboxing Game notifies the winner, who then gets a $1,000 gift certificate to Cool Stuff Inc., Card House, or Game Nerds. Then the winner goes on a $1,000 shopping spree at one of those online stores, picking up $1,000 worth of board games of their choice. Finally, Unboxing Game does the whole thing over again next month. So what are you waiting for? Get your entries in today and secure your chance to win. Hi, I'm Joe. I'm Tom. And today we're going to talk about what we acquired. Yep. What we played. You bet. A special phrase. Towards the end of the podcast. Maybe. Who knows. (laughs) And uh, then we're going to do our top ten dice games. For us, this was a tough list for me to compile. Holy smokes. So, um, I could I probably it. do like a top 100. I could do at least a top 20 or top 30. In fact, I think I've got five that I consider my also rands for the top 10. So, maybe go over those after the end, the end of the list. Well, yep. Well, Would have made my list, but some other things just beat it out a little Ooh. bit. So. All right. And uh, then we're going to have some promos to give away. And uh, so for for anybody that missed it, so we we gave away the Robinson Crusoe game to Marvis Harder, or, yeah, uh, Mavis, sorry, yep. Mavis Harder. Uh, she's the winner, so she will be getting an email or has already gotten one uh, by the time anybody's listened to this or she's listened to it. Hopefully, uh, yeah. We had uh, quite a few entries into that. Um. And we just do a random number generator, which is uh, either a die or, or if a it's too big of a number, then we'll go with that. Yeah, digital. digital. Yep. Um, and then we had uh, onesies, uh, future board gamer onesies from Bearded Board Games that we gave away on our Facebook group per, group, group page. And if you're not a member, join us. We're a public page, uh, so it's just, we give away random stuff every once in a while. We share things. We're just building a community. Yeah, so. usually do an unboxing of some kind, or maybe we do a game playthrough. We've yeah. done that a couple times. So, uh, What was the uh, the, the game? Un- you did Traintopia. For Traintopia unbo- was unboxing. the unboxing we did. So if you're interested in that game, it's by Premek Wojcikowski. It's a board and dice game, two to four players. Takes about half an hour to play. It looks like a real cool little tiling. Uh, uh, drafting type game. It really looks fun. You said that name much better this time. Yes, because yeah. I pronounced it, a, a, practiced it a couple times. Yes. So, uh, so the uh, onesies we had nine winners: uh, John Thornton, Miranda, Baron Brock, Tommy Bird, 
Dexter Vorce or Vorce. Vorce. I, I, or Vorce. I guess, yeah. That that either either sure or one. dealer's choice. Uh, Pat Clune. Elisa Tilly. Karen Bolte. <laughs> Duena Paplo. And Ray Slavin. Slovin. Slovin yep. I'm not sure if I mispronounced your name. I apologize. And same here um, if I did yours. So. Yeah. Well, he's not really that sorry. I am. I truly am sorry. I'm a little sorry. sorry. I'm a little sorry if I mispronounced your name. I'm more sorry than Tom is. Okay. That's fair. Wow. He, he admitted to that. That's fair. So uh, I feel bad now. I'm not sorry about much in my life. Yeah. Though. Yeah, so apparently not. 50% of right. the average Joe uh, hosts here are very sincere. The well, other I'm sincere. 50... I'm just not very sorry about a lot of stuff. Wow. So okay, that, that escalated. There you go. All right, so uh, let's talk about what we recently acquired. You obviously well, got obviously, something cool. I got Traintopia. That was the game I picked up. I got it at the Game Chest uh, store in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I think it's a brand new game. I think I've only seen a couple of playthroughs of it. Uh, looks really fun. Like I say, it's a tile laying game that involves drafting tiles. It involves drafting items you can put on your train lines. And once you're down to one item left, you start a new round. I think it goes eight rounds. And then after the final round, there's one more round where you get to draft something that will help you in your scoring. And then you score it up and win. And the tiles can be offset. They don't have to be laid orthogonally or diagonally. If you need to offset them a little bit, you can as long as trains match up or and don't go into uh, the empty tile. It's just a really cool looking little tile laying train game. Kind of a Carcassonne meets uh, Ticket to Ride. Okay. Did you get anything else? Yeah. I also had a Bud K Day. I think I've told you about Bud K Days when we've talked in private. Uh, basically, there's a website out there called Bud K, and they sell mostly knives. is probably the biggest thing people know them for. Uh, they sell jewelry. Uh, they sell ammunition, actually, for pistols, which is kind of cool. Um, they're kind of a, a nerd or survivalist type website. I found them mostly because I was looking for switchblade knives one time. And uh, I did buy a switchblade knife. That's one thing I did buy. Uh, it's an automatic knife is what they call it. I also bought a couple of really cool bracelets and a lockpick set. Ooh. Yeah, mostly because I was bored. That's why I had a Bud K day. I was really bored. All right. And I got them all. I, I think I ordered them on a Monday and I got them on Wednesday. Wow. So they ship pretty quick. That was very quick. BudK.com. Not a sponsor. All right. And uh, anything else? That's, I think, pretty much it other than, you know, food. <laughs> Whoa! You yeah. have food? I have food. Did I, you order that online, or did I you did go shop not. for I yourself? I did I actually shop. Well, I bought a mask. I bought that from Nirvana. Whoa! Yep, and I don't like wearing it. Uh, it makes me feel constricted and uh, claustrophobic a little bit. I have a suggestion for you. Plastic bag? I think that would be worse. Oh, okay. I really think that would be worse. But I do wear it, because it's not the for me. plastic bag? No, the mask. Oh, okay. It's not for me. It only makes it a, a few steps out of the car. He's got yeah. that plastic bag on it. He just yeah. drops. Why is that guy just faint? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's for, not for me. It's for other people, basically. I wear it for other folks so they feel safe. How about you? What did you pick up this this week? Well, I got a love seat for the game room. I like it. I got a uh, heated massage recliner. I haven't tried it yet. Want to? <laughs> That's my baby. <laughs> I spend many hours already in that thing, and I've only had it for like four days. He was sitting um, there when I came over. This is true. Um, and then I picked up two more 3D printers. Oh, cool. I got uh, a large 300 by 300 by 400, and then a uh, smaller one, 220 by 220 by 250. And so it, it does quite a bit of, I mean, about the small one's eight and a half inches, I believe. Yeah, uh, I think that's what you said. Square, yep. and then like 10 inches tall, roughly. Yep. Okay. And then the other one is uh, I think it's like 12 inches, something around there, wide or squared. And, and then at it's, least 12 it's, inches it's tall, about yeah. 15 inches okay, tall. Okay, good. So. And I, I have no idea how the technology works. It's all a miracle to me, but what have you made with it so far? Well, I made uh, the cauldron for Villainous. So they come with this cheap little... Uh, I don't know, is that vacuum mold? Yeah, it looks like it's a vacuum molded plastic uh, cheap cauldron, yeah. Which, it's their, not terrible. their idea of a cauldron, for me, is a lot different than what I... Yeah, it's not really a cauldron. cauldron, it's kind of like a... 
Well, it's like Hades yeah, Cauldron. Yeah, it's, basically. Which uh, is maybe what rocks. it is. Maybe that's what it Formed is, from, up. considering that's So a that's their cauldron, and they, on Thingiverse, they have a print of it. And so you get a very more detailed version of a cauldron yeah. than what this vacuum form one is. And so my wife, I printed her a few small ones, yep. and uh, she wanted a big one. So I printed her the full-size version, and uh, it works out pretty good. So... But I, I told cool. her the smaller ones, because those are about four inches is all. Yeah. Whereas this one's, I don't know, it's about six inches or so. Okay. <laughs> You're trying to bait me. You're baiting me, <laughs> and I'm not So anyway, the four-inch <laughs> ones, I told her she could put in the expansion, because they're smaller yeah, boxes. Yeah, so That's pretty cool, actually. You put them in there, and that's what, three-player game? Uh, so most, not I think the as expansions many include, yeah, most of them include three So she could put one of the four. I could make her th- uh, one more, and she'd have enough for the, the each them. three spa- expansions, yep. and, and then you put this one in the big event. base game. Yeah. So that's what I figured. It's very cool. So yeah, the very, a lot more detail on this. So I made that. I'm gonna make one for a friend, and I'm making a glow in the dark yes, one for you. I like the glow in the dark idea. So and then you're currently and making. Yes, I am currently printing out a uh, a dice tower that stands about 12 inches tall. That's a Disney Kingdom of Hearts dice tower. That sounds cool. So far, what I've seen of it looks pretty good too. It's so. very, uh, it's it's an awesome print, I and mean, I got them super cheap on Walmart.com. Nice. Uh, so the the large one was like a normally a six or seven hundred dollar uh, machine, and I got it for two thirty. That's pretty good. And then the other one was like a three four hundred dollar machine, and I got it for one hundred and forty. Which actually, oh, wow. uh, the one I ordered, they were out of stock after they processed my order, so they oversold it, and so they gave me a more expensive machine. For the same for price. the same price. Nice, very nice. So I was very happy with that. Yep. My oldest son has a 3D printer. He's I think used it once or twice because he's been out of town or out of country ever since he bought it. But he seems to enjoy it when he uses it. He uses it for different things than gaming stuff. But yeah, I mean it's they're great for gaming components. Yes, I, I use mine stuff. mostly for nerd stuff. Yep. And there is a lot of stuff out there on Thingiverse, like you said, for different games, for inserts, for components. Like I know, I know somebody came up with uh, 3D printed uh, cities that, for the center of Scythe <coughs> that you can use um, for terraforming Mars. There's 3D printed greenery tiles yep. and ocean tiles and uh, city tiles. So it's pretty cool. A lot of that stuff is very, very cool. Yeah, I know I've got uh, files for the uh, 3D Catan. Yep, that's the other one. The big one I've seen was 3D Catan. Yep. One of the first ones probably out there. Yeah. Was for 3D Catan for each of the trains and things. So, I actually just heard recently that they're re- reissuing the uh, the fancy 3D version Ooh, of Catan. Ooh, that might be something that has to go on the list. So very, I like, I like Catan. Very expensive. Yeah. So have you hit any Kickstarter lately? I have not. Oh, as you know, weird I have eschewed Kickstarter. All right. Well, I backed quite a few things on Kickstarter. I saw that because uh, I'm a sucker. I still follow people and see what you know. Back. It works out for you though. Yeah, because, because I get to play them. Yeah, you get to still play them. So, because yep. uh, if they don't hit the mass market retail, then then there's that. Yep. Um, so, I had. Let's cut this part. Gonna find the list. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so I had backed. They have this really cool uh, replica, and I mean replica, from the movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jumanji board. Yep. Uh, there's a couple of YouTube videos of people who built these, and, and now um, they're finally back. In, now they're finally actually going to sell them. Oh yeah, it's so. Well, um, I backed Tumbletown. That one looked interesting. Um, so that's a, a dice stacking spatial puzzle game. So, dice game. Dice game. Yeah, dice game. Appropriate for the uh, day. By Weird Giraffe Games. I backed uh, the Mint Control Collection. I do like the other Mint games. And then I backed the board game replica for the 25th anniversary of the Jumanji game. And so, it's it's a handmade... Uh, it's, it's just like in the movie. So, you flip open. It's hand-carved. It's not like the cheap Walmart one for 20 bucks. Right. The Walmart one for twenty bucks was pretty good. Gets me going. Yeah, it's but not this bad. one gets me across the finish line. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you toss the piece into the corner, 
the magnets line up and it stands up yep. just like it did in the, in the in the movie. Yeah. The center of the or the the oracle or whatever it is in the middle that yep. kind of transitions, they have a a, a weird lens that kind of well, they have a screen underneath that. Yeah. And that's computer. And it puts the num- and it puts the, the message words. in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it it's kind of kind of like a little bit of a dome yep. so that way it looks magnified. Um then when you pick up the game, it senses you picked it up and you start hearing the drums from from uh, Jumanji. And uh, it's, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I, that I one swear, comes out of Berlin, Germany. I would wonder, I wonder if these are the same people. There was a video that came out maybe three or four years ago of somebody who built basically what you're talking about. I believe so. Because they said the this is their people. second production line. Yeah, maybe, well, I think they just built it for themselves. or for It was basically a, a, a movie prop version of the Jumanji game. Uh, like a, what, what do they call those in movies when it's the like the gun from uh, Firefly? Replica? Well, no, it's, they call it the something prop. It's the it's the main prop. So it's the one that you see. Like uh, uh, Han Solo's gun in uh in uh, Star Wars, okay, or Firefly gun in Star Wars, you know, it's just the, or in, in uh, Fire the gun in Firefly that uh, Mal carried. It's just basically it's uh, it's the uh, the main prop, the one that you'll see most often because it's the one that they're going to show in close up and stuff, and that's what this is. But I think is it an actual game or is it just a replica of the? game? No, it's a game. You can okay, play it. So you can play it. Yep. But I don't want to. I don't want to. Don't want to start it. I've seen what happens. Yeah, but you haven't experienced it yet. No, and I don't want to. I've but you will. I've seen what happens. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be here playing this game like for days. Yeah, that'll be on. That'll be a live, live video on Facebook. Playing oh, you can guarantee you when I get that that we are you. definitely doing a live Facebook video oh, for yeah. that. Uh, so then I also did uh, three ten-minute games. That one um, looked good too, actually. Sequoia is a can't stop meets Las Vegas. Mountain goats is King of the Hill with six hills and dice. And then GPS gives you most satisfying spin. See, this was one that was sort of difficult for me to see and not back. Because it would have been an instant back when I was doing Kickstarters. Uh, then I backed... Um, this one's still got 22 days left on it. Over Battle. Uh, this is kind of a sci-fi, futuristic board game. A little bit of area control... Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, uh, Eclipse. Okay. Meets um, a game that I despise. <laughs> I was going to say Twilight <laughs> Imperium, but... Oh, is that the... I can never remember the name! It's, it's a block you have. It's yep. a block you I have. was thinking gasoline something. Yeah, gasoline fire game. Um, this one's got 16 days on the left on it. I don't see it making. They've got a long way to go. But New Os- Osaka, Battle to Rebuild, and it is a kaiju game. Okay. And it comes with awesome cool miniatures. miniatures. Yeah. Um, and then this one just popped up today, uh, well, for for our group. Yeah. They've got 15 uh. days left. They've already funded. And the theme, I loved it. Okay, so this is called The Great Race. It takes place in the 1930s, and you're sitting behind the wheel of a half track. You are going to enjoy the craziest human adventure you get to race around uh, South Africa and then South America. And you have old 1930s cars, and you are trying to uh, manage your resources while achieving these these checkpoints. I like really cool games. little miniatures of the cars. Yeah. And the player, uh, the player screens, so you have a screen in front of you, is the dashboard of the car. And then you've got uh, tracks that you monitor your fuel usage and all the other stuff on it. Yeah, it sounds like a good one. So I'm, I'm uh, really interested in that one. So I backed that one. And I had to back this one. <laughs> uh, they Live, Assault on Cable 54. So um, John Carpenter's movie. Yep. And I believe it was Rowdy Roddy Piper. I believe that's That correct, was yeah. starring in yep. that. And so... I'm a big um, fan of the 80s movies, so I had to back this one. Sure. It looked fun. It's the one where you put these glasses on, and it looks like they're creatures. Oh, um, yeah, like yeah, Like dead yeah, people yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. or yep. aliens that I are remember. hiding in human flesh, and yeah. you have to wear these special sunglasses. Well, the game comes with sunglasses. Nice. So um, it's got three days left, 
It's more than funded. It, it needed 39584 to fund. It's reached 157000 That's pretty good. So it's, it's, blocked, it's knocked through um, quite a few of the stretch goals. I'm definitely looking forward to that one. That so, one looks like it'll be good. Um, so those are the ones that I, I backed. I try to stay off of Kickstarter as much as possible, uh, but there are so many cool games and awesome people putting them out all the time so it's kind of hard yep. to time, turn you back because you know some of these are just not going to hit retail no really and that's that's true but and like you said i even though i've eschewed backing things on on kickstarter i still follow you i follow a couple other people who get a lot of board games on Kickstarter. don't worry guys he's gonna get sucked back in eventually that's my concern is i'm eventually <laughs> i mean i was close on the 10 minute games we'll just wait until uh, uh not dice number three comes out yeah I don't you're get gonna get one. sucked right back or in island dice two yeah yeah, that's the one. It's finally a game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just an expansion, guys. <laughs> but it's finally a game. Whoever so. did back Island Dice, I mean, <clears throat> we have our sympathies. Tom? I might have been the only one. <laughs> I don't remember what the goal no, was. I would I hope don't... that you were the only one because if it's funded off of <laughs> you I alone, I don't remember I mean, it explains what the a lot. Goal, I don't remember what the goal was or how much I backed it for, so, you know, it could have been All we need game. to raise is $30, guys. Yep, 30 bucks. It's going to take <laughs> way more than that to cast the dice, but $30 will get us going. Yep, there you go. So that's probably what happened. So, we don't have a game, we just have dice. And a cool insert. So what have we played lately? Well, the last game I played was Train... Uh, not Traintopia, we played uh, Roll for the Galaxy. Yes. Speaking of dice games. That was the uh, first time I've actually played that. Yeah. It was pretty fun. It's a pretty fun game. Basically, you're uh, trying to build an empire. Uh, if you're familiar with the game Race for the Galaxy, it's the dice version of it. So you do have dice that will allow you to pick... Uh, phases. I think it's uh, explore, develop, uh, uh, not colonize. What's the word? Settle. Settle, produce, and ship. So it's the same phases as Roll for a uh, Race for the Galaxy, um, but you pick them. You have dice that have those different phases on them. You choose which dice you want to put where, um, which phase you want to take, and it's kind of the same type of thing with Race for the Galaxy. You hope that I want to really develop, but I'm really hoping somebody explores. And sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, basically, you're trying to buy developments and worlds to to uh, to to uh, s- s- colonize. And first one to twelve wins, or not done win, but the most points wins. First one to twelve ends the game. Uh, you have to manage your resources. You have to manage your dice. Uh, you have to manage your money. <clears throat> it's just kind of a cool game. You liked it? I did enjoy it. I, I would need to play it a couple more times. Yeah. Um, cause there is a lot to it. There is. And I, I have played, uh, Race, Race for the Galaxy, yeah. but I gotta say it's, it's quite a bit more, it's quite a bit different than Race. So. I think if you've played it a few times, you'll start seeing more of the, right. more of the comparisons. I, the first time I ever played Race for the Galaxy, I think it had literally, maybe the week before it came out, I was down at VermonCon in, in South Dakota here, and this couple had it, they'd gotten it somewhere. And I was walking by it, and they, they looked at me and said, oh, you want to try it? I said, well, yeah, what is it? And they said, it was Roll for the Galaxy. Do you know what race? I said, yeah, I'm a big fan of Race for the Galaxy. I play a lot of that. Oh, you'll like this then. So it didn't take me all that long to figure it out because I knew the iconography, and I kind of knew the concept. You knew the concept from, uh, from Race. Yep. And Jess had never played either one of the games. And she picked it up very quickly. I think it confused her a little bit to start with, but yeah. I think she picked it up quickly enough that, and you know, obviously we're here to help her out too. I think a big part of the philosophy. She said she was not a fan. <laughs> yeah, and I believe that it's it's a little complex, but part of the philosophy we have too is if we're teaching somebody a game, we're teaching them the game. We don't necessarily care if we win or not. I don't care. Oh no, no, no. I had my foot on her throat the entire time. Well, yes, you did basically, but I mean, my my thing is if I'm teaching somebody a game, I don't care if I win or not. Which works out for me. Yeah, and it did work out for you. Yeah, because I won. you did end up winning. Yep. <laughs> I had my foot on both of their throats, yeah. which made it really awkward you, to stand. You won, like, by three points. That's about it. So, no. 27 was me. You were at 32, I think. I was, so, at, I was at 30. You were at 27. Oh, so three points. Yeah. yeah. That's what I said. Uh, but I want to say, if you're not first, you're last. That's true. If you're not first, <laughs> if, you're not, if you're not the winner, you're the first loser. Yep. And you were so the first loser. I was the first yeah. loser. Yeah. It was fun. It was still fun. I had fun playing the no, game. No, it was, it was a good game, no matter who won or who yeah. lost, yeah. which was you. It was me. <laughs> it was me. But that's the only thing I think I've played this weekend. I wish I could have gotten over yesterday to play, but I did not feel real well. So. Yeah. He, not uh, with the corona, but no, with No, uh, it turns out he's a leper. <clears throat> it's, weird. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know where that came from. My, yeah. my uh, right toe fell off one time about a year ago. Yep. Just about a year ago, coming up on a year. 
Wow, um, anniversary of a toe anniversary amputation. Anniversary of a toe amputation. Cool. Um, no, I just had some stomach issues and then a headache, and that finally went away at about 9 o'clock last night. So Yes, feeling the fine text today. of uh, not feeling real well, staying home, not a case of the Rona. It's not a case of the Rona. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, it's and you it's guys. Good. Play, what'd you guys play yesterday? So yesterday we played a game of Couriers. Oh, yeah, oh, that's I'm a sorry. soul being murdered right there. That's a fun game. It's that is a, a great game. game. We don't get it to the table nearly enough. No, we do not. Um, we played it a few times. Got some and, numerous uh, good expansions. It's just it a fun game. Kind of depends on who you're playing with. People that it do does. not like dice <sighs> games, you will not like this game because no. it primarily it's, main component is dice. It's dice. It's a great so, game. It's a dice building game. Yeah. So you, you're you're building up your dice bag is, is what you're doing. Um, really, really enjoyed that game. Yep. Um, and then we played uh, Ticket to Ride New York. <clears throat> and that Again, I wish I had not missed that. Is a small version. Uh, you play Tax Cabs, which I actually didn't know because I was, I was just talking about uh, when we unboxed Ticket to Ride oh, London. Oh, yeah, yeah, London. I just yeah. made a comment. I'm like, well, maybe it's Taxis. Yeah, and, and I had no clue it was, it was yeah, Taxis. It is yeah. Taxis. What are, the, what are the cards, the car cards? Are they... Uh, just variant, various cars, and okay. then uh, the wild is taxi. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I think they had a bus on one of them. And, Similar but, goal to London, I assume you're going from Yeah, so you're going from uh, tourist, to tourist attraction to tourist yeah. attraction. Every time you connect a tourist attraction to another tourist attraction, you collect a point or points for that. So, you'll get points for that. There is no track around the board. It is a, a score pad. Okay. So, it's the same... Same scoring mechanism. You still get. You still have your cards, tickets, your destinations, destination tickets. Okay. And uh, you'll you'll try to connect as many. Uh, when you get down to two cars, you end the round, and everyone gets one more turn. Same as <clears throat> ticket to ride or the other ones. So, yep. um, yeah, it was it was really good. Uh, I think I won that one last night too, and that was that was pretty much it. Uh, I spent most of my day yesterday. Was putting together 3D printers. There you go. Because they're they're do, do it yourself. They're not pre built. So gotcha. Takes a little bit to get them tuned in, but it was. But did you know, a good honestly, job. it was it was super easy. Barely any convenience. Barely any convenience. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So <laughs> turn a guy on to a, a YouTube website and he starts to quote it regularly. Yeah. So. You ever get a chance? Oh my God! Screen rant. Screen rant. Pitch meetings. Oh my God, they are hilarious and addicting. Yeah, fa- fairly addicting. Yep. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. The uh, <laughs> the Tiger King one is hilarious, and I've never watched Tiger that King. That was the first one you watched. But, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That that one's yep. a uh, that one's a good one. It's uh well, just because Tiger King is such a it's so I messed w- up, and I I kind of want to watch it just because it is that messed up. I got told by my boss basically. He says you like this. If you, this is pretty good. You'll like it. I got twenty minutes into it and went, nope, <laughs> nope. I, I think it's hilarious that they said that the main character looks like he would be Michael Keaton in a witness protection program. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. So that's yeah, I'm good. I'm uh. Fairly hooked on that right yeah. now. Oh, yeah, and, and there's a lot of them to watch. You can go through them. I think they let you make suggestions as to what other ideas, you know, they have. So it's it could go on for Doing quite a while. Doing the binging of that and then Stan versus Evil. Have you ever seen that? I have not. That's uh, from IFC okay. uh, channel. It's on Hulu, and they're like 22, 25-minute episodes. Okay. And you can fly through them pretty quick. But uh, it's got uh, – so if you're familiar with – Scrubs. Yeah, oh yeah. I can't think of the guy's name Zach. that plays. No, uh, oh. Dr. Cox. Oh, yeah, he's very good. Oh. Uh, so he plays uh. Stan, and okay. he's the main character. And uh, it's him against evil. Stan versus evil. Okay, yeah, and, I have to and so that I was watching this, and I thought, you know, what would be a better show than put Bruce Campbell as Ash with Stan... Stan. Stan against Ash, evil. Stan and Ash versus evil. Yes. I or mean, Ash those two Stan, guys yeah. would be hilarious that together. That would be pretty funny. So. I guess I did watch a movie uh, that I had been trying to find for a while and finally found it free on the Roku channel. Cause, Ooh. Uh, but it was called God uh, God Bless America, which is directed and written by Bobcat Goldthwaite, the comedian. He also did a movie called um, uh, Shakes the Clown. These movies are not for children. At all. Why were you watching it? Because I am a grown-ass man. Oh, okay. Okay. I wasn't sure. I can watch what I want. Okay. But anyway, I just, I 
really enjoy... Next time, ask me for freshman. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I really, really enjoy um, Bobcat Goldthwait's weird sense of humor. Um, and this one is, like I say, you don't want kids to watch him. It's basically about a dude who decides that rude people do not need to exist anymore. And he and this 16-year-old girl decide that together, and uh, things escalate from there. It's very interesting. So... That's all I'll say about it, but God bless America, and if you haven't seen it yet, Shakes the Clown. I all recommend right. that one highly. So that's that. We want to move right into the uh, top ten, or do we want to do these things first? Oh, well, we can. We can give away some free promos. Uh, we've got three sets of promos to give away. Um, why don't you... Well, the first one is a game called Sweet Mess. I have no idea what this game is. It looks like what we have here, though, is it's a, a chef game. promo. And it's got, uh, yeah, it must be some kind of cooking game because the promo is a chef promo. It comes with a standee for the chef, it looks like, and a couple of cards that must go with that uh, with that particular chef. Chef's on um, female on one side, male on the other. All right, and then I've got uh, Teotihuacan, City of Gods <coughs> promo. Uh, looks like two different... Uh, two tiles. tiles. One of them is a looks like it's a tile that would uh, be a worship tile, where your dice get locked. And the other one looks like it's just a tile that you would pick up. I honestly don't recognize that uh, the back of that. You played the game? I have. I played the game a couple oh. times, and it's pretty fun. It's a worker placement, uh, area control kind of game. And then the other last one is Stonebound. It's another game, Stonebound Saga. It's another game I've never played, and it looks like it's a character card. Character's name is Elizabeth. Um, it also includes her stats, I believe. And, uh, yeah, it looks like there's a couple of stat cards with spells and stuff. So if you're familiar with the game Stonebound Saga, it looks like either a full art of a character or a new character. Okay. Not sure which. So I think that all you have to do is just make a comment. Yeah. Well, yeah, just that, which just, one you're interested uh, in. Tell us which one you're interested in, and we'll put you in a drawing. Put you in the drawing for it. So, okay, there's that. So, shall we go into our main topic? Might as well. Dice What's our games? main topic? Dice games. Dice games. Dice games. Top or ten dice games. Our top ten dice games. Yep, our top ten dice games. Which is this oh, time? Oh wait, 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 wait! I'm okay, putting hold on, them. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. the bricks. Okay. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. Got it. Brakes pumped. Roll for the galaxy. Yeah. What would you rate that game, sir? Oh, good point. Yeah, I forgot about that. We got the, uh, the, uh, Joe, what is it? The had, Jovian it down. The rating Jovian, scale. Oh, there it is. The Jovian rating scale. I actually did write it down here. Well, I like the game quite a bit. Um, it may or may not show up on the list that we're talking about. Whoa. This time we actually kept the list secret from each other. Last time we knew what we had, but because I, sort of said I thought I'd know what both of our first games would be. I think Joe decided, well, I'm just going to probably fool you. Anyway, I would say it's a four. So a solid Smoke and Joe. Whoa. Solid Smoke and Joe. And I'm going to go for a Joe Cool. Yeah, I was going to figure you'd say a Joe Cool. I yeah. think if you played just because I'm, I'm not 100% on that, so... Yeah. yeah, it's a Joe Cool. Yeah, I think it's if you a, play it a few more times... It's a good game. Yep. It's, a, it's right in the middle of the bar, so it's Joe Cool. Yep. And if you were going to uh, play it a few more times, I think you might you might it upgrade might upgrade to a Smoke and Joe. It might. But right yeah. now it's it's a solid Joe Cool. Okay. Do you want to rate the other two or? Yeah, Quarriers. Uh, <laughs> let's go with Quarriers. Quarriers. Quarriers is. Go ahead, you go first. I would say it is Joe Tacular. It is Joe Tacular. I'm going to go with you on Joe Tacular on that one. It is it, okay. We've told this story before. It's the game. By which Joe it's and the, I met. It's the game that made Tom and me fall in love with each other. Exactly. So <laughs> I just I I had purchased the game. I don't believe I played it more than one or two times. And I see this couple sitting there looking through the rule book or setting it up or something. And I thought, I'm just going to ask. I want to play this game. I love this game. So I said, Can I play with you? And they said, You bet. Yep. I uh, just and need you to sign this restraining order. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. So we play at it was at Ion's event at the yep. Sanford Hospital. And uh, just a great game. Love it. Joe Tacular for sure. Whoa. And since I didn't play uh, Ticket to Ride New York. Ticket to Ride New York. I'm going to give that one. I really like the the theme, the artwork. I think it 
Just it's quick. Smoke and Joe. I can't remember what I gave uh, London. If I gave it a Smoke and Joe or a Joe Cool. So that's what I was going to ask you because I don't remember what you gave it either. I gave that one a Smoke and Joe as well. Okay. And I don't remember what I gave it honestly. I have a feeling I would if I played it. Uh, give it a Smoke and Joe more than likely because I love Ticket to Ride. It's just I like the little taxis. Yeah, and Ticket to Ride's just in any form is just a great game. So if I if I'd played it and could rate it without. You know, if I, I, I not rating it because I didn't play it, yep. I would probably just based on the other Ticket to Ride games and London, give it a smoking joke. Now, I I really do like those small box Ticket to Rides. Yeah, they're good. It's it's an awesome filler. They're very good. So, yep. Yep. So on to our main topic right. of dice top games. ten dice games. Our opinion for the average Joes. For the average Joes. Yep. Want to. Starter off since I think I started it last time. Number 10. My number 10 is Star Trek Five Year Mission. Nice. Now we talked about this last one, last podcast, but if you're if you're new to the podcast, uh, welcome. Uh, so Star Trek Five Year Mission for me is uh, is better than Roll for It because there's Star Trek theme. <laughs> you get to pick a character. Uh, you can pick between the crew of the Next Generation series or the original, and uh, you get powers with it. And it's just you got to complete these missions, and some of them are timed. Some of them are um, you have to do these missions first, priority missions. And it's just it's it's a fun game. I really like it. Uh, that's my number ten dice game. It was in my top twenty. Did not make my top ten, but I do enjoy that game a great deal as well. My number ten. Sushi Roll. I very much like Sushi Roll. It's a dice drafting game. Um, basically, you're trying to build a menu, and you have to pass the dice around each round, and it's just kind of an easy game for a lot of people to learn. It's essentially a Yahtzee-based game, but it's uh, it's just it's my number 10, Sushi Roll. Okay. And I Sushi Roll Party. I should probably point same. out that these are games that we've played. Right. So there probably are... Better games out there oh, yeah. that we just haven't played yet. Well, so. that's that was kind of the rule I had when I made the list was it had to be a game I played. Right. Um, and boy, it turns out I played a lot of dice games because I had a lot of games on the list that love I love dice games. Power, power. Number nine. My number nine is Lantern Dice. I like that game. Gosh, I, like I that game. love lanterns. And the I Harvest Festival. <laughs> But as far as a dice game goes, I really like that roll and write of lantern lantern dice. Yeah. I like I love it. So yeah. uh, it's cool dice. The same kind of gameplay as lanterns with the tile placement, but it's dice. So you've got a little bit more strategy. Um, it just it's really cool. That one that one's my number nine. Not on my list again because I kind of forgot about it, and it's probably sitting right on my shelf where I could have seen it when I was building the uh, list, but I didn't think about it. Uh, the one I did see though was my number nine. Dice Throne, Ooh. which is a two-player, essentially, two-player skirmish-type game where you use dice as your... You're basically trying to build poker hands to make your powers, to activate your powers. It's best as a two-player game. Each character, and I think there was six in the base game, I think the rest of the expansions have two different characters, have their own unique dice, their own unique powers. It's asymmetrical, and you're basically trying to knock out the other player... Uh, using your spells and your weapons that are controlled by what dice you roll. And it's Yahtzee-style rolling. You roll dice, save some, roll dice, save some, roll dice, you're done. It's just a great game, good uh, good components, great uh, art. The art on that game is really cool. I think, have you played that one? Did we play it? No, I have not. Uh, I you brought it over. Brought it over. We, we, uh, we kind of looked through it, but we did not have a chance to play it. Okay. yeah. It is one that I would like to play. I will make sure I bring it over at some point and we'll play it. So that's my number nine, Dice Throne. Number eight. My number eight is, I would call it a classic. Uh, my kids love the game. I, uh, I blinged out the game a little bit. I got these little brains for counters. Oh, I knew this. Yeah. Zombie Dice. Yeah. Steve Jackson Games. I, I absolutely love the game. I like the expansions, the bus. You know, you, you take three it's, dice out at random. You take two out if you want to take the bus and roll for your options. There's an expansion where there's uh, a uh, action hero and there's a uh, 
uh, action heroes, I believe it is. Yeah. And then there's a Santa Claus. If you oh, roll yeah. a Santa Claus dice, he gives you a helmet, and you can take one more shotgun blast to the face. Uh, so it takes four to take you out, because you're the zombie in this yep, game. in this game you're the zombie. Um, the energy drink turns all green feet or all feet that roll um, into brains. Yep. And then um, there's one that has two brains, and then Santa, Santa brought you an a- yeah. extra brain. So It's just a, it's a great game. I really like it. It is in my top 15. It's yeah. in my top 15. Again, this was a hard list for Oh, and they are coming out with a another release on it. Come out in May or June with translucent dice. Oh, no, that's not right. That's yes. That's cool. So I have to get that. Yeah, but right. that's my number eight zombie dice. Okay. And I wish I'd... Well, I knew that I... Like I say, it's in my top 15. I'm pretty sure it's in my... It might be in my top 18. Anyway, my number eight... Dice Masters. I really, really bought into Dice Masters, especially the first couple sets were superheroes. I think they were all Marvel. Then they came up with a DC set. Then they came up with a D&D set, then a Yu-Gi-Oh set, then a Teenage Mutant Ninja set. Um, then they screwed up the sets, so it's like I stopped buying it. But it's just a great game. It's sort of a precursor to Quarriors, which we talked about earlier. It's by the same designer. It's a WizKid game. Uh... It was a collectible game, which was one aspect I wasn't real fond of on it. Um, but it's just that a, is the only reason why it's not in my top yeah, ten. It's a collectible game, and those those are rough. If they could have made it as like a, you could buy the whole set and then play the characters you wanted to play. I would have liked that a lot. Yeah, better. I would much rather be okay with buying expansions than the whole yeah, grab bags yeah, and have. Which 15. I think they may have kind of moved to now, but yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I don't play it anymore, but it was well enough liked. That it's in my top ten. It's pretty much dead now. At num- yeah, it is pretty much. Yeah. Well, no, there's still a pretty good community that plays it, but just not around here. Yeah. So it's in my number eight. Number seven. My number seven. I don't know if you play this one or not. I don't know. This is a Haba game, and I bought it mostly because I have younger children. And my daughter, Kathleen, she's five years old, soon to be six, loves playing board games with her dad. She's pretty much my only kid that loves playing board games with her dad. And so I bought King of the Dice. And it's a little box with a lot of game. You get these awesome little wooden dice. It's a Haba game. And then you get this awesome artwork on these cards. And so you have different parts of the town or locations that you're trying to visit with these dice. And you're you're kind of doing a roll for it a little bit. You either have to match the colors on the card with the dice, or you have to match the numbers. And you either have to play all odds on this one, or a red and a blue, or you just, you know, you do different things, and it gives you different points. After so many locations are empty, the game ends, you add up your points, and you're done. So it teaches the kids, uh, well, it teaches them strategy, it teaches them mathematics, you know, it's there's just so much to it, and then the artwork really fun. Um, so that's that's my number seven, King of the Dice. I'm not on my list because I have older kids, but I have seen the game. I think I've, I think Kathleen's draw, dragged it out and asked all of us to play it at one. time I would time play or this with you without play. any kids around. Yeah. It's it's a it's great game for of, all ages. Well, that's the thing with Haba games. There's a lot of Haba games that are sure they're designed for kids, but they're fun to play just as a grown up as well. If you look at any game of Haba. I'm pretty sure it says for minimum age to 99. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. So we're on number seven, right? But he's 100, so... Yeah, there you go. I can't he can't it. play it. Okay, so my, <laughs> number, my number seven game, King of Tokyo. Whoa. It was going to be on my list. It was one of those games where I kept moving it up and down and all around, but King of Tokyo, man, the classic new Yahtzee, essentially. It's... Got great monsters, a great mechanic with the dice. She's rolling claws or health or numbers or energy. Trying to collect all those things. Trying to stay in Tokyo as long as you can and be the last monster standing. And that goes for King of New York. And I think some of the expansions for King of Tokyo are really good. Uh, the the power ups are great. The costumes are fun. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the uh, promos that I've you know the what's the pan you get the panda I think on one of the promos or yeah gingerbread man you've got a uh, Christmas tree yeah. uh, unicorn. Well, last time we were at Geekware, the time before I guess the, fir- the first time you went, um, you got they, two promos. I, I, yellow was there. It's a yellow game. 
um, they were there and they had a contest. They had a, basically a King of Tokyo tournament. And yeah, you got promos. So I got those promos. That's pretty cool. That's my number seven is King of Tokyo. Number six. My number six is King of Tokyo. I figured it was going to uh, be. I absolutely I agree with Tom on that. It is, it is a great game. My kids absolutely love this. I can play it with adults. Um, it's a great game to get anybody into gaming. And I love that New York adds a little bit more to it. A little strategy to it, yeah. Um, but I absolutely love the King of Tokyo Dark Edition. Oh, yeah, that is oh, awesome. Oh, Wow. The bits are cool. the The artwork is more movie themed, and that's where I'm going. So, yep. well, and it added love that, King of Tokyo. It added that evil track or the what, the wickedness yeah, track. The wickedness track, cool. and then the different artwork for the monsters and the box. It's just great game all yep. together. King I love of all of the King of Tokyo stuff, but the Dark Edition has has it for me. Like I say, I kept moving it up and down on my list, and it landed at seven. And I guess that's where it stays. So uh, that's my number six. Yep, my number six. You probably forgot about this game. I know we both like it quite a bit. It was one I kickstarted a long time ago. Island Dice? Waggle Dance. Oh, yep. Waggle Dance. It's basically you're a beehive. You're trying to pollinate and make honey and create more bees. And it's honestly been long enough that I have, since I played it, but there's uh, flowers that have dice on them. You go to the different areas to pick, collect your, your dice or the pollen just a really cool little engine building kind of almost worker placement but not quite uh, it's got some of the worker placement element to it but it's just a great game it's just a lot of fun i kick-started it because i liked the dice their b uh, the dice are basically six-sided dice but the number one is a b um they're yellow i think and white if i remember right i don't remember exactly but i know they're well and then plus you get your dice or your color and that kind of thing so and the dice that are the color of the uh of the flowers there's just a lot of dice in that box. I love that game. It ended up being number six on my list. You know, I'd love to go into a number five, but instead I feel like we could just do a special phrase oh. to uh, to the listeners and see which one wants to email us at Average Joe's Gaming Podcast at Outlook.com for a chance to win Isle of the Cats. What I would like for you to do is... I want to see a picture of your kitty cat. Oh, there you go. That's a good right idea. Right meow. Right meow. So the special phrase is right meow. And if you'd like to go ahead and put a little picture of your kitty cat, I'd love to see him. Yeah, I would too. I'm actually a cat guy. One of the cool things about Seriously, this Seriously, he has a tail. It's weird. It's weird. And ears. Pointy ears. But anyway, no, the one thing that's really cool about Isle of Cats is that when you take off the top of the box, and this is a very heavy box. Yes, I mean, it the is. Box, the box... The materials that the box are made out of is very heavy. But you can take the lid off the box, set it down, and inside the box is a little target where your cat is supposed to sit. I have yet to get my cats to get into it because I haven't had time, but I have one cat that I know as soon as he sees the box sitting on the bed or wherever I set it so he can get into it, we'll get into it. And I'll take a picture. So that'll be another thing. I'll include that. But so yeah, right meow is yep. the phrase. And if you want to send a picture of your cat, please do. To Average Joe's Gaming Podcast at Outlook.com. Number five. King's Forge. Yeah, I like that one. That's a great game. <laughs> That's a great game. I was King's oh, Forge or yeah, Dice no. Forge? Uh, maybe it's Dice Forge. No, 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 no. Uh, King's Forge. Which it's one a different it? one than Dice Forge. Okay, then I'm, I don't you, know that one. So King's Forge, you actually do know. Uh, okay. It's the one with a little anvil as the first player marker. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually another one I kickstarted. Lip, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. What's his name? Uh, <laughs> Lip Nicky or something like that? I don't know. But so you are name. forging oh, items for the game. king. I forgot and, about that one, too. Uh, I think the Dang first it. one to forge five, uh, five items wins the game, or uh, ends the game. Six items, I think, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah. You, you forge so many items to end. You have these awesome dice. Oh, and you're really cool. you're yeah. trying to get different dice, and you're trying to. There's a track on the top that has all the items, and so card drafting is yeah. involved. It's got a lot of stuff. There's at oh, least three so expansions. Really, cool. I forgot about that one. Really I cool dice. Flat out admit, I forgot about that. Yeah, one. you did. So my number five is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so that's my number five. What's your number? My five? number five actually is Dice Forge. Oh, Dice Forge, which is one of the more unique dice games I've ever seen. You're actually building dice. You start off with the basic dice. Everybody has the same dice. 
Um, and as you progress through the game, you have the ability to buy new sides for your dice. You can pop off the side of the dice and add a new side to the dice, which will give you different powers. Now, the really cool part of this game is that everybody rolls their dice at the same time, and so everybody gets to benefit somehow, or at least a little bit, during everybody else's turn. You have more to do during your turn, but even during somebody else's turn, you get to do stuff. So I really like Dice Forge, and that's my number five. Number four. So my number four is Kingsburg. Oh, good choice. So Kingsburg is a dice placement game. You have um, several different areas that you can place your dice. You roll all your dice, and you have different numbers. You can add those numbers together be to put them on different locations. So you go around the table, and you try to take different advantage on these locations. Only one person per location. Um, and then by doing that, you're also trying to move yourself up on your defense or your attack. Yep. And try to... So when the monster comes... Right. You can fight it. So uh, that one's by Fantasy Flight Games. Yep. And I just, I really like that one. I actually yeah. splurged for the specialty dice on that. Those are really cool, too. Yeah, they're and they're also cool. really expensive. They're like they're 10 bucks pricey, per yeah. set, and I think there's like five or six sets in the game. So That still doesn't beat the specialty dice for uh, uh, Blood Bowl. Just saying. The Blood Bowl dice are really expensive. Good yeah. God, they're expensive. Or the specialty dice for like Island dice or something. Yeah, that was, that's just a whole, that's not a game, so it doesn't really count. Yeah, but they're dice. You're just buying dice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so that was my number four, Kingsburg. Um, I had Kingsburg on my list. It kept going up and down. I picked a different game instead of it for similar mechanic. My number four is Space Base. Oh. Yeah, so if you're a fan of Machi Koro, this is kind of one step up from Machi Koro. You're essentially rolling dice to take advantage of the numbers, and you get to split the numbers. So if you roll a seven, and it's a three and a four, you can take a seven, or you can take a three or a four, use the power on your board. Now, the cool thing is if you have, if it's not your turn and you've gotten a card moved up to the top part of your board, you can basically use that power as well, either a three or four or seven. And it's not quite the same power, but it's, but it's, there's some cool powers you can use. So you can always do something during everybody's turn. I like that about any game where you're not, where you're not just sitting idle during somebody else's turn, you know, as they take 15 minutes to decide something and it just (laughs) drives you nuts. But in this game, you've got something to do on everybody's turn. So that's my number four, Space Base. Number three. My number three is Dice Forge. Ah, okay. I really like the fact that you can change the the size (coughs) of the dice. That is probably the coolest aspect of the game. So, yeah, that's you talked a little bit about it. Um, I I like that. The different... different, And it changes every time you play it because you can... Uh, put different cards out there, which is giving you different abilities for those faces. Yep. And then the expansion adds two different uh, two different expansions to it. I think there's two, but I honestly don't remember. I think I've only ever played the base game. So and I really enjoy enjoy that one too. But we'll have to give that one to the table. Exactly. But that's my number three. My number three is Sagrada. Ooh. I I just it, it, if you talk about a game that has a ton of dice. Um, you're basically building stained glass windows, and the game comes with a number of different cards you can pick to put in your board, so you have a different stained glass window to build than your opponents do. Uh, it's a dice drafting game, essentially, but it comes with, I don't know, 70-some different oh, colored dice. beautiful dice. And they're gorgeous. And you have to place them orthogonally to each other. You can't, I think you can't have the same color or the same number next to each other. Correct. It's just a really cool little building game with dice. I just Sagrada is one of my favorites. There's at least one expansion for it, and maybe there's two. I don't remember, but it's a great game. Just the base game itself is a lot of fun. So Sagrada is my number three. Number two. So my number two was a very hard decision between my number one. So my number two is Quarriers. I know it's a shocker to Tom. I'm a little shocked. I am a little honestly But I shocked. think when he hears my number one, he'll understand why. So my we, number two is, is Quarriers we've talked because about it is an amazing game. Yep, it is. Uh, and, and all the and expansions the, are just awesome. They and they're add, full games. They're full expansions. Yeah. The, so The names are stupid. Oh, I mean, they're I'm great. Say Everything's that, a cute. Yeah, it's all cute. It's, so it's cute. It's your your cute. currency is Quiddity. You know, you've got... Yeah. Uh, 
It's just it's it's just it's great. But you're flinging spells. Absolutely love you're it. trying yep. to you're putting monsters out, trying to kill other monsters. Get some portals. And grab some oh, more dice. Oh, it's just it's like he said earlier when we talked about it. It's a dice building game. It was the first. I played deck builders before. I'd never played a dice building nope. game before. No, I, I, I absolutely love Quarters. Absolutely awesome. And the uh, the original game came in this uh, tin. Yeah. And it, it's shaped like a die. The tin look, yeah, it looks like so, a dice. So, and on the on the lid is the Ooh. Quarters dice. Yep. So it's very cool. Um, I I absolutely love it. They they've come out with uh, quite a few different versions of it, and uh, I think three or four expansions. And it's essentially just the really good. The, it's essentially the precursor to Dice Masters. Yes, I think the other game that came out that didn't make my list, but I do, I do have it. I just haven't ever, I have not actually ever. Well, I think I played it once. Is the Lord of the Rings uh, dice game? Oh yeah, I, I have played that. Uh, I actually really yeah. enjoy it. The rules are horrendous. Yeah, they're not good. It's um, a whiz kid game. The game again. is is really good. Yep, it's a whiz kid game. Dice Masters is whiz kids game. So is uh, Quarters whiz kid games. So my number two. Is we, are we on number two? Yeah. Number two. number two. Number two. Euphoria. Oh! I love that game. It is my all-time favorite Stonemaier game. Uh, it is the one of the first real seriously good worker placement games. But the workers, instead of being meeples, are dice. Uh, a lot of good things going on with that game. So. Hi, Gavin. Yeah. How are you? Gavin, how are you? Great shirt, by the way. Oh yeah, your hair's not pink anymore. What happened? It's magenta now. Oh, leave that. Leave those things alone, though. There's a little bit left, but not very much. It's mostly blonde. Yep. So, Kathleen, you want to say hi? Hi, Tom. Well, you want to say, say hi, hi to, to the, the audience? Microphone. Hi, audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is your favorite dice game? Um. Yahtzee. Unicorn glitter luck. Unicorn Glitter Luck. Is that the one that you asked me to play a couple times? Yep. I thought so. You roll the dice, you got a cupcake die, and you got a cloud die. Oh, yeah, that's a cool game. And you I got little unicorns. That game. And that's a Hobba game. And that's, yep. We're uh, at number one. Do you want to flip for it? Uh, let's roll. It's, there's eight sided dice. Let's roll that and see what happens. You got a three. I got a three. three. I got a seven. seven. Okay, you're number one. And finally, number one. My number one, and I uh, I thought long and hard about it, and it finally came down to this, because it was between Euphoria and this game is my number one. Island Dice. I knew it! No, <laughs> it's not Island Dice, because first of all, it's not a game. Oh, okay. It's just got cool dice. No, my, my number one is Quarriers. I pick Quarriers as my number one, because ultimately... The number of dice in that game, it's just, and the coolness of the dice, the different powers that they have, I love that game. So my number one, we've talked about it pretty much all day today, yep. Warriors. And see, I had the same dilemma you did, but I, I, I love Warriors. It's a great game. It is an amazing game. It's it's Joe Tacular. It is Joe Tacular. Um, but. I also really love Euphoria, and <gasps> I love it just slightly more than Quarters. Wow! So am... it was a very tough decision to make oh, between God, number yeah. one and number that two. That was that was the exact same thing. It was I did. basically a flip of the coin, yeah. to be honest. Essentially, so it would have been for me too. Euphoria is my number one, and wow. it's That's just cool, I though. really I love the dice. I love the placement of the dice. Well, that's and that's the almost. What, I love the theme. Yeah, that's what almost turned What's it for me this? was the fact that it's also a worker placement game. You know, and I love worker placement right. games, which kind of leads into what we're going to talk about next. But I actually do have my next my runners up. If you want to hear those, all right, let's hear. I don't some know if you did. Up. I don't know if you did runners up or not. Uh, it changed as I was sitting here, actually waiting for us to start this. Uh, my number eleven, Gizmos. Okay. I like Gizmos quite a bit. I almost forgot it was a dice game, basically, because you're using dice to build your your contraptions. I think you're using marbles. Why well, use maybe? Yep. I, so maybe Gizmo shouldn't be on the list. <laughs> I don't care. I liked it. Uh, so not. Gizmos. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're yeah, using you're marbles. Right. You are using marbles. I thought for some reason I thought there was dice in that game. That, same thing happened with a game called It's a Wonderful Life. 
I thought for some reason it was marbles, but it's just cubes. Oh, okay. Not dice. Or I have not played dice. that one yet. It's pretty fun, but it's not dice, it's cubes. But, you know, cubes are dice or cubes. A lot right. Of dice or cubes. Okay, so then my new number 11 would be, um, well, I can't do that one because that's already on the other list. Probably Stone Age, honestly. It's a similar type of deal. It's Dice is not the main mechanic. Right. But the dice are cool. They're yep. wood. They, they get rolled out of a smelly leather cup, but it's... Dice are how you get your resources. And the cool thing about it is you have ways to mitigate what you get for resources. Even though it's a random dice roll, mm -hmm. you can make it better mm -hmm. to get stuff from those dice rolls. So more a worker placement game, but it involves dice, and I re really like the game. So uh, Space Base was in there as probably, I think I put Space Base on my main list, though, didn't I? Oh, you I did. did. I did, yeah. Oh, yeah, because I had changed it. I had to change something out. So, yeah, Space Space was on the list. So, maybe I don't... Uh, Fuse, okay. Remember the game oh, Fuse? Oh, Fuse is a good one. Yep. It's a, it's a real-time dice rolling game where you're trying to defuse a bomb. Yep. And it's really fun. Really fun. Another good one is Deep Sea Adventure, uh, where you're trying to go down to the bottom of the ocean and get as much treasure you can to come up before your oxygen runs out. Okay. Dice is the mechanic to get down and get back up. Um, somebody pointed out to me Raja of the Ganges is a dice game. Oh, that's a good game. Where I don't have it. I've only played it a couple times. Though. Played it once or twice. I really, yeah, I played it with you once and uh, really enjoyed that game. Uh, dice are the resources as mm -hmm. opposed to the uh, as opposed to being the workers or and then uh, Liar's Dice. Liar's Dice is the uh, kind of the I actually considered putting Yahtzee in my top ten. Like Fluff? Yeah, basically. It's like Fluff. Okay. Liar's Dice, essentially. Any yeah. Liar's Dice type no, but what's the what's the thing for Fluff? It's Liar's Dice. You're basically... Yeah, but what's what's the winner? The Fluffer. <laughs> He's the best Fluffer. The best Fluffer, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can find a, that there's one There's a small target. child in the room! You Joe. can find that one at Target. Yeah, you can. It's actually pretty fun. It is fun. Dice. It's a hilarious game. Uh, but yeah, it's essentially Liar's Dice. Yep. It is, it is Liar's Dice. I mean, that's what it is, so... That's uh, that's our top ten. Okay, so next week uh, we will give. Next All right, week. so next week we will talk about our top ten worker placement games. Oh, okay, that's going to be another one that's going to be rough. It's going to be very rough. There's a lot of worker placement games that I like quite a bit. So we will reveal our winner for the Isle of the uh, the Isle of Cats. Yep. Which is a one to four player game, 60 to 90 minutes, ages eight and up. There's three different versions included in the game. There's the normal version, there's a family version, and there's a solo, solo version. version. Yep. So, and there's a target for your cat to sit in the box while you are well, yeah. play the game. The box lid. So there you go. So, so email us right meow. Yep. With a kitten picture of your kitty if cat. You like it, a picture of your kitten. Or kitten. Everyone likes to see kitty cats. I do. Yep. Tom loves kitty cats. I do. He does. I have three that are mine and one that's supposedly my kids. But he's living in Florida now, so who knows? It's my she's mine. Anyway. Yep. And then next week we will give away another game. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If you guys I don't know if you know this, but this is a podcast, so you couldn't actually see the expression <laughs> on Tom's face. So it's a good point. I keep forgetting that. There's a look of surprise. <laughs> I think this <laughs> I think this. I always think this microphone is actually a camera. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. So that'll be our next next week's episode. Top ten worker placement games. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any feedback when you're sending in your entries, we love reading your guys' emails. We had quite a few last time. Uh, absolutely love it. So give Sug us some feedback, suggestions for other top ten lists. Yes. And if you do not enjoy our podcast, please be gentle. Yeah. That's all we have. So even though it's we're the doing internet, this for fun, and yeah. and to be honest, we we pay for it all. So yeah, it's and just, we pay for these games that we give away. Exactly. <laughs> so they are not given to us by distributors or the produ uh, production companies or whatever. It's not any of the stuff that we're giving away is is actually uh, out of our hard earned money. But we like doing that because we like our listeners, and we want you guys to uh, have a little fun in this time of quarantine. So, And quite honestly, if we're giving the game away, it's probably a game that we've played and really enjoy. Oh, yeah. Isle of Cats. Isle great Cats game. Great. So whoever is the lucky winner of this game, 
Wow. <laughs> yeah. And and we'd want to see a picture of your cat sitting in the box lid if you have a cat. Yes. Can. Uh that's another thing. Um honestly, yeah, if you win something from us, send us a picture of it. We yep. want to see the yeah, we want to see well, you with, with I the item. Particularly want to see a baby in a onesie. I think yeah. that's just going to be cool. I think Yep. It's a really cool idea. And we so. will share it with uh, the companies like Beard Board Games. Um we we purchased those onesies, but uh I'm friends with the uh the owner of beard board games and so i will definitely pass them down to him so there you go all right but um so that's that's us for for today yeah anything else nothing else to wrap up with um no i'm gonna i'm gonna put out some cool stuff this week i think yep so be fun. we'll talk about those next week then yeah other than that i think i'm gonna binge watch a little bit of uh stan versus evil i'm gonna try that one i'm pretty sure i'm gonna look that one up you said it's on hulu yeah okay i get hulu but it's, it's a commercial version of it so, so do i have, I have that and it's so. really not that bad no. it's, i think it's like four commercials during the episode yeah it's so. not terrible it's uh it's a really good i used good to show. watch bosh on, H- on okay. hulu okay I, I love the books the bosh books the tv show is pretty good too so if you get a chance to watch that one i recommend it i recommend stan versus evil it looks very good I'm yes it's that. hilarious So, uh, until next time, I'm Joe. I'm Tom. Thank you all for listening. Hey, follow us on Facebook at Average Joe's Gaming Podcast and the Average Joe's Gaming Podcast group. You can follow us on Instagram at Average Joe's Gaming and on Twitter at Hammerly Joseph. And you can stream a number of different videos on YouTube. You can also listen to our podcast on Google Play Music, Amazon Alexa, and TuneIn, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Pocket Cast, CastBox, Castro, Podchaser, Pandora, and SGP Radio.